Richard Medhurst, when I first introduced him to you, was a young hopeful. I saw myself in him. Just a few years later, he's one of the most important journalists on the planet, internationally renowned, broadcasting and writing everywhere and being listened to at the very highest levels, all of which qualified him to end up in handcuffs at Heathrow Airport just this last weekend. Let's hear straight from the horse's mouth. Richard Medhurst, I've never been happier to see you than I am to see you tonight. It was an utterly chilling experience. And for those who haven't yet heard you describe it, please reprise what happened to you at Heathrow last weekend. Hi, George. Good evening, and thanks for having me. It's, it's uh, an honor to be with you, and uh, I appreciate your kind words and support. Uh, what happened to me was a uh, scandal, honestly. I mean, I, I was going to, to London. I, I, um, you know, I was met at the entrance of the aircraft. They told me to come to the front of the plane, and suddenly there's these six uh, police officers, uh, one of them even in tactical gear, um, and they were telling me that uh, I had to g give them my, my uh, you know, bags and I'd come off the plane and they wouldn't really explain why. Um, and then they said that I'm being arrested, so not detained, but arrested under the Terrorism Act, <laughs> uh, uh, Section 12. I mean, uh, to this minute, I, I, re I really can't believe it. And, and they, uh, they wouldn't really explain what exactly uh, Section 12 meant. Um, you know, they uh, they uh, they basically uh, put me in handcuffs, and, and they were just normal handcuffs. They were double locked and wrists on top of each other. So you, you're like this. I, I almost, you know, I, I to to struggle to not fall over in the van. They drove me about ten minutes to Heathrow uh, Police Station, and uh, they threw me in a cell. Basically, they they ransacked my bags and all this stuff, and then they threw me into a cell uh, that was. I mean, it, it's more of a toilet than a cell. Honestly, there was no toilet paper no windows, uh, barely any light, freezing cold. Um, and you have to beg, you have to nag uh, for the most basic of things. You know, you, you, I, I, since the moment they arrested me, I was saying, I just got off the plane, I'd like some water, please. I, I ended up waiting hours, hours for, for one small cup of water. Um, you know, I, I also was told I'm not allowed to speak to my family. So, you know, they were saying, you have the right to tell someone that you're you're locked up. Well, I said, I'd like to do that very much. And then they would run, say, well, you, your calls have been withheld. And, and and they even gave me a pamphlet that said I had the right to say it. And I was, you know, I, th I thought I better drop it. I better not even argue because it felt like being in a primary school. You know, you're, you're being told to shut up even. So, you know, it was, it was basically not being told what I've done uh, for about 15 hours, thrown in a toilet um, and uh, told to shut up. And it's a miracle that uh, they they called a solicitor because I was honestly not expecting, uh, not, not expecting them to do it at all. Um, and then they questioned me for about an hour, maybe it was an hour and a half, two hours. There was no need to keep me, 20, you know, almost 24 hours. I think they did it to, to intimidate me and to uh, dehumanize me. And, uh, you know, when I when I got to the station, they made me basically take off my shoes. I had to take off my socks. I had to pull the socks inside out and hold them up to a group of police officers for them to look at and then hold up my feet. <laughs> you know, like, like it's unbelievable, really. It is and that's uh, not even unbelievable, it. even as I hear you describe it for the second time. Uh, the I mean, the pen is mightier than the sword. But it is, after all, a pen. And a pen cannot, however you dice it, uh, be described as a terrorist weapon. How are they, how did they even begin to make the argument that you were worthy of arrest and handcuffing under terrorism legislation? Well, I'm, unfortunately, I can't. I'm not really at liberty to go into the questions because I'm still under investigation. They might, you know, they might charge me in three months or whenever, and I have to go back to this police station. So, uh, I'm, I'm out on bail. I'm, I'm, I'm on pre-charge bail. Now they told me it's unconditional, uh, but I'll get back to that in a second. Um, how did they begin to do this? Well, you know, it, it's, it's about my coverage um, regarding Palestine uh, fundamentally. That's what, that's what it is, and I feel like they're targeting me because mm -hmm. I. 
Um, I don't know which story it is in particular, but I was doing a lot of stuff recently. I was talking about the Israeli Olympic athletes, uh, you know, how they were saying pro-genocide and pro-war things and, and not being neutral. I was talking about the gang rape in State Aman, the massacres. So I, I don't know what it is that ticked them off. Maybe it was something from a few months ago as well. I, I really don't know, but uh, I think they just, uh, uh, you know, they, they just want to silence me. They want to have this case hanging over my head um, you know, living in fear. Am I going to be charged? What can I say? Uh, can I talk about what happened to myself? Can I talk about what's happening in Palestine? So they want to muzzle me, George. That, that's effectively what they're trying to do. And so they say it was, it's unconditional, your but it's parents, not unconditional. Uh, yeah, uh, your parents uh, must be horrified. Uh, your family has given distinguished service uh, to Britain. Uh, and indeed to the international community uh, through the United Nations, Nobel Peace Prize winners. It is literally unbelievable, actually, that someone like you could end up in the circumstances that you ended up uh, this weekend. But I would like to advise you that the decision to do this to you could not have been made by a simple police officer. No police officer has the, uh, the idea that a man who just bought his ticket that morning uh, should be met by six officers. You try getting six officers to any crime scene, one in tactical <laughs> gear, uh, this was not a police decision. This is a political decision, driven no doubt by the intelligence services, but a politically accountable decision to seize, like some banana republic, a distinguished British citizen, increasingly renowned for his broadcasting and journalism in the world. So I believe that the the crime that was committed against you was committed not by the cops that were sent there, but by the political masters who took a decision that Richard Medhurst has to be cut down to size. Are you able to comment at all on that? I, I don't know, honestly, but um, uh, honestly, George, I, I'd be surprised if it if it well, were anything else. It, it certainly feels like a political persecution, and uh, you know the the thing is that I I'm not going to say if it was because of foreign interests or or not because I I genuinely do not know. Uh, but uh, to be honest, the the idea that um, you know um, that I would uh, support or have anything to do with terrorism is preposterous. I mean, if you're going to arrest someone and send six police officers, you obviously have some idea who you're arresting and what their profile is. So they know I'm a journalist and they know uh, who my father is. He was in the Metropolitan Police. He, he, he's an authority on counterterrorism, right? Counterterrorism. So he taught me a lot about that as well. I mean, I, I myself, I'm a victim of terrorism. When, when, I was, uh, when we were posted in, in Islamabad, um, when I was in the British school, it, you know, there was a double suicide bombing in, in, in the building next door, the Egyptian embassy. And uh, w while I was in, inside the school, I remember that. And uh, you know, I, I condemn terrorism. I, I want nothing to do with terrorism. I, I think the idea that I would have uh, some kind of, you know, Ill, Ill intention towards the country or, or something like that is, is preposterous. I'm, I, really, I mean, the, the six officers coming to arrest me, and again, I'm not talking about them personally, but this kind of intimidation, I, th that is a form of terrorism. They're literally trying to terrorize you uh, into, uh, you know, into being, uh, into shutting up. They're trying to make you submit and, and uh, stay quiet. And I can't allow that to happen. It's, it's, I have a moral duty. I have to continue my work. But the problem is now that uh, the threshold for the Section 12 of the Terrorism Act is so low, it is so uh, draconian that anything, truly anything at all, can be skewed into the most preposterous uh, uh, crime. You know, they, they can take anything that you have said or that you, even something you didn't say and accuse you of terrorism. I mean, I, I really, if, 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 if I could only speak freely, I think you would be... 10 times as, as shocked uh, uh, as to what happened, George, really. Uh, but there's no doubt it's a political persecution. I, I feel like my coverage on Assange also uh, might have annoyed some people. 
and the fact that uh, I've been coming to England and, you know, this is my country and, I'm, and I've been invited all up and down the country and, you know, uh, east and west to speak and they don't like that. So, um, you know, the idea that we're going to submit and yield to uh, Zionism and these kinds of interests, I mean, they're, they're trying it on the wrong person. Amen. I'll not tempt you further, Richard, uh, because I can sense that there are limits to what you can tell us. But please accept the full solidarity of everyone at the Mother of All Talk Shows, and I'm sure everyone watching uh, this show this evening. What's the best way that people can show their support for you right now? Uh, just to make noise, just to highlight how absurd the uh, terrorism act is and unjust it is. I mean, I, I was literally criticizing it as I was getting on the plane and then I got arrested under it. It's really remarkable. Uh, so the best way they can support is just to make noise and, and uh, try and raise awareness and, um, you know, uh, put pressure on uh, the, you know, the uh, organizations that are for pr free speech and journalism to also issue statements in uh, you know, against the terrorism act, because it's not just about me. This is the beginning of an escalation. They're making an example out of me, and they'll go after others because they, they've usually detained people. They've never. I don't. I don't know of any cases where they actually arrested journalists under Section 12. So I think I'm the first one. And uh, you know, th it's not going to stop here. So I'm grateful to to everyone for for their moral support, and uh, it really goes a long way. It's really cherished. Thank you, George. Richard Madhurst renowned independent journalist and political analyst. Thank you, as always, for being with us on the Mother of All Talk Shows.